Hello, today we are going to talk about MOSFETs in parallel using uh, optimized current sharing technology. Uh, my name is Steinhans Nersbach and I am an applications engineer at Xperia working in the Power MOSFETs department. Uh, first, let's talk about the market and the products. So over the years, as technology has been advancing, we've seen an ever increasing uh, requirement for higher currents in power applications. And with these ever increasing current levels, one MOSFET might not be enough anymore. That's why high power applications are now resorting to putting two or more MOSFETs in, uh, in parallel. And as we see here on the right, the power now can go all the, way, all the way up to 10 kilowatts, while the MOSFET voltage is between 40 and 100 volts. Uh, and from that, you can then understand how much current is actually required in these systems. And the number of MOSFETs in parallel uh, depends on the application profile. So all these different applications here, uh, they require different current profiles, and that also dictates how many MOSFETs they need in parallel. And furthermore, depending on the application, they might also require to handle large current surges. For example, a electric golf buggy, as we see here, if you have to climb a curb, it's going to need a large amount of current for a short period of time to actually climb that curb. Uh, so with that in mind, let's go over the problems and the solutions of actually paralleling MOSFETs. Now, what are the key factors in MOSFETs for them to share current equally? So on the right here, we have two MOSFETs in parallel, as we've seen, and we're switching it on and off. Now, during steady state phase or conduction, these MOSFETs are essentially on and RDS on is the main component. So we can simplify this into two resistors. And these two resistors, they will essentially aim to share current together. So if you have main current coming in here, that will split, be split apart and it will be shared equally. The reason for this is because RDS on has a positive temperature coefficient which means as temperature increases, RDS on increases. And if RDS on increases of one device, uh, less current will flow through and it will cool itself down. So essentially it's inherently stable and the resistors will aim to share current together. However, the story changes quite a bit in the dynamic phase of switching. Uh, so let's uh, take this and uh, simplify it to a switch in the resistor. Now, if one switch is turned on before the other, all this initial current will go through this uh, switch and resistor and not through the other one because that's still off. And this creates an imbalance. And after the, this device also turns on, then they're sharing current. But it's the initial turn on when one MOSFET is on and one and the other MOSFET is off, uh, there will be a lot, there can be a large uh, imbalance in current. And this principle applies to MOSFET as they have a range of threshold voltages. So two MOSFETs, they will never necessarily have the identical threshold voltage. They usually come as a range. And because of this, you run the risk of one MOSFET turning on before the other. Now, another very important parameter is that threshold voltage has a negative temperature coefficient. What this means is as uh, it gets hotter or as the MOSFET gets hotter, its threshold voltage actually reduces. So if this device here, if it gets hotter, the threshold voltage will reduce and it will actually start turning on earlier and earlier, making the device take more current for longer and longer and longer. And this is why it's considered unstable. And this is a very uh, large concern uh, in MOSFETs. And that's why we focus mostly on the threshold voltage compared to RDS on, because again, RDS on is stable and threshold voltage is unstable. And the ideal solution is to have MOSFETs switch at the same time. That would be ideally what we'd like to see happen. Now, the solution adopted for regular MOSFET technology is to essentially screen devices into batches. What this means is, as mentioned, threshold voltage in MOSFET, regardless of vendors, always come in a range. And here's a snippet from a data sheet where we see the range between two and four volts. So what we do is we select MOSFETs with similar threshold voltages. So we essentially select the devices to get in a tighter range. Now, the very important thing to keep in mind is this is not a technology. It's a process of matching devices. So it's regular technology where after the devices have been made, you then sort them based on threshold voltage. 
and engineers consider plus minus 10 percent threshold voltage to be sufficient to achieve equal current sharing. But this means the devices must be screened into batches to this condition with similar threshold voltages. And what this does is that it increases cost because you're actually adding one more step in the process and you also increase complex complexity because you have to keep track of uh, the different batches and the threshold voltage uh, devices. Now, threshold voltage is still a temperature dependent parameter, so we actually haven't fixed anything here. Uh, so the impact can still be seen on current sharing in a real application because threshold voltage is still temperature dependent. Now, however, the Nixperia current sharing solution doesn't rely anymore on threshold voltage. So uh, we don't require matching threshold voltages to achieve balanced dynamic current sharing. And this is a MOSFET technology. So we're not adding an extra step where we're screening devices based on threshold voltage. This is a MOSFET purposely built to share current with other MOSFETs. And it does this by actually just not relying on threshold voltage. So we don't need that additional screening process. And it's not uh, impacted by the issues associated with threshold voltage. For example, the negative temperature coefficient, which is with threshold voltage, doesn't impact it to the same degree anymore. And the spreading threshold voltage, again, because it doesn't rely on it, again, the impact is considerably smaller. Now, the current sharing technology ensures that the MOSFETs will share current more equally during switching, even in non-ideal conditions. And current sharing technology is a passive solution. That means that it doesn't require any special control or feedback. So from a design perspective, uh, it's still a three terminal device. So with this, let's actually have a look at some lab results to actually see what this means. So we're going to compare current sharing technology to regular technology. Uh, so we have a test procedure where we essentially take two devices from different technologies and they're selected with the same difference in threshold voltage. So we take two devices from regular technology with a 0.5 volt difference in threshold voltage. And we take two devices from current sharing technology with the same 0.5 volt difference in threshold voltage. Again, we want the comparison to be similar. We're just comparing regular technology versus current sharing technology. And the devices are placed onto the same circuit driving an inductive load. So again, the conditions are the same to test these two sets of devices. And the current through each MOSFET is measured. Uh, so here we have a simplified circuit diagram where we have four MOSFETs in parallel. Uh, we have a current sensor for every single MOSFET, so we know how much current is going through each MOSFET at any given point in, in time. And as we see here, we're driving an inductive load. And in this case, we're switching at 20 kilohertz uh, in these tests. So here we see two results. We're on the left side, we have regular technology. And on the right side, we have the current sharing technology. And we are roughly taking 35 amps per device in both cases. And so we have two regions here. We have the dynamic region and we have the sort of steady state region here. And again, steady state, this is where resistance or is, uh, is dominant. And as we've said, that's the stable region. So that's not much of a concern for us. We're concerned about the dynamic region. And as we can see, if we look at the difference between peaks, this is 14.1 amps compared to current sharing technology, which has 6.1 amps. But another thing is also notice the amount of time these two are actually separated from each other before they start closing in compared to current sharing technology, which essentially after the first peak is on top of each other and sharing equally. And this is very important. Now, in, let's instead of doing 35 amps, let's do uh, 75 amps and here we can see how the difference becomes very dominant so here we have 31 amp difference between the peaks and for the current sharing technology the difference is only 5.2 amps so it's a sixth of uh, the uh, size of the regular technology and also it takes considerably longer for the regular technology to start closing in on each other and sharing again. So they're staying mismatched for a longer period of time compared to current sharing technology, which kind of hits, uh, gets together and share equally nearly instantaneously. And again, these have 0.5 volt difference. So, they, so both have 0.5 volt difference in threshold voltage. It's, again, it's a similar sort of test. Um, now, another very interesting point is that here we're doing 20 kilohertz tests. 
Now, that means that these are on for 25 microseconds. However, if we were to increase frequency, let's say 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, the dynamic regions would always stay fixed. What happens is actually that the RDSON is just shortened. Uh, so that means that essentially if it was 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, this would stay fixed, this would stay, this response here would stay fixed, and they would essentially just come closer together. And that would also apply to the current sharing technology. So at higher frequencies, current sharing technology actually becomes even more important. And this is 75 amps per device. Well, another test we can do is to test the current sharing performance at temperature. So the purpose of this is to prove how the current sharing technology fares with, uh, in the case where you have one device uh, that is hotter for whatever reason compared to the other devices. So here we have regular technology on the left and current sharing technology on the right. And we heat up the device here and the device here. And each mismatch device, these are both the one with 0.5 volt lower threshold voltage, this and that. And each mismatch device is heated at the same rate and temperature. So first we measure with no heat, so we so initially, then we measure with heat applied for two seconds, and then we measure the current with heat applied for four to five seconds. Uh, so we just want to see how temperature impacts the current sharing, essentially. So here, this is a cold test, and we have the regular technology on the top and the current sharing technology on the bottom. And we can already see that the current sharing technology is, as expected, better than regular technology at sharing current. And let's take a note of these peaks here, just, uh, just for future. So as we heat the devices up, so now we've heated the device up for two seconds, we can see that because the blue line has been heated up, its threshold voltage reduces, meaning it turns on earlier, and they start sharing even worse. Compared to current sharing technology, because it doesn't rely on threshold voltage, even though it's hotter, it actually hasn't gotten any worse. And if we go to four or five volts, it act, uh, sorry, four or five seconds, it actually spits apart even further, and current sharing technology, the peaks are essentially staying dead on. So if I go cycle a bit back and forth, you can see how the peaks are staying uh, fixed. You'll see that the RDSON is uh, sliding down. And that's because as the device is running hotter, as we said before, RDSON increases, so less current is flowing through it. But again, we're interested in the dynamic region because, again, uh, that's where a large portion of the losses uh, stem from. So from this, we can see that a variation in temperature can have a very big impact on regular technology, while the current sharing technology is considerably more resilient to changes in temperature. And the reason for this is because a PCB can have varying temperature, which can be due to PCB layouts. So if you don't have identical layouts across under or uh, around every single MOSFET, uh, the temperature will also be different. And because of this, uh, with regular technology, they won't share to the same degree as current sharing technology. Now, to achieve equal current sharing, good PCB practice is very important. These devices, they will not share the current for you. However, they will share the current to the best ability that they can. So the current sharing devices will perform better than any regular technology because of the temperature stability and the inherent better current sharing, even in a non-ideal layout. From this, uh, we also have devices coming soon in 2021, uh, where we, they will come in LFPAC 56E packages and LFPAC 88, and in 80 volt and 100 volt rated devices. And we will have more information about layouts and technology uh, in application notes, quick learning videos, uh, data sheets, and so on. Uh, and so the conclusion from all this is that standard technology have imbalances in switching. And the matched threshold voltage, which, which isn't a technology, it's a solution, will reduce, but it doesn't fully eliminate the problem. And temperature differences in the PCB mean that screened threshold voltage devices no longer maintained the quote unquote matched threshold voltage. Because again, if one is running hotter than the other for whatever external or internal reasons, uh, their difference in threshold voltage will, will be increased. That an Xperia current sharing technology is tolerant to differences in the PCB temperature. And an Xperia current sharing technology is optimized to share dynamic current more equally as it does not rely on threshold voltage. 
and we showed all of this with the lab results earlier in this presentation. Uh, please feel free to share any questions that you might have or any insights. Uh, thank you very much.